Alrighty, welcome back to three minute formulas brought to you by notion workflow. So in today's video, we're going to be going over the ifs function or the ifs formula in notion 2.0. And I've just created this very basic example between a checkbox with nap and checkbox with games and a formula to sort of understand and visualize the ifs formula. In most cases, we want to sort of create a status or an output when certain criteria overlap, right? And so in our case, we have two checkboxes. Between those two checkboxes, we can have one be filled with the other being empty, another being filled with the other being empty. Both can be empty and both of them can be filled. So there's four different outcomes that we want to sort of organize for this ifs formula. I'm gonna use the empty function and the explanation point to say not empty. So if nap is not empty, we're gonna say, Nap. It's pretty simple, very, very straightforward. Now let's say if games is not empty. So now when we have selected the checkbox for games, it says gamed. But now look what happens when you click on both, right? Notice how the napped formula output overrides the gamed output so that even if you have gamed and you click on nap, it overrides and switches to nap. And so the reason why I'm showing you this video today with this Venn diagram is it has everything to do with exclusivity and the ordering of how you write out your outputs for these checkboxes. And so some things that we need to think about are when they're both empty, like I mentioned. So we're going to use the and function, connect the two. We can do did both. And the reason why I'm keeping it very simple is to illustrate how this exclusivity works and how you can start to think about ifs formula, how to visualize sort of the criteria. If both of these are filled, right, not empty and not empty, it's supposed to output did both. I'm just going to copy this again for the last output, which is empty and empty. So when there's nothing going on, it's gonna leave blank. If we do wanna change, you can do start, right? Give ourselves a little encouraging message to say we got to nap and we also need to play games. So the reason why I have this Venn diagram is because Venn diagram provides a way for us to understand all the different outcomes of playing games or napping. So if we were to just nap, understand that we're just filling out this red side of the circle. If we were to just game, we're only gonna fill out this yellow side of the circle. And so bit in the middle is where both happen. And then sometimes what people forget is the exterior of the Venn diagram, where none of these things. In our case, it means that both of them are empty, or both checkboxes are empty. And when both in the middle, it means they're both checkbox. But in our case, even though we've created all these different outputs, nap is not empty, we're going to show napped. When games is not empty, show gamed. And then notice how our third outcome is if both of them are not empty right? And then the last one is when both are empty. And so the way that we're structuring this currently is saying we're going to take the outcomes for everything here, right? Where nap is not empty. And we're going to take all the outcomes from here where games is not empty. So what that means is this middle overlap is not being accounted for until the third line of the if statement. And then likewise, if both of them are empty, we're just looking at the exterior of the Venn diagram. And that is why this start now function works, right? Because this is exclusive to whether these are filled or not. So in this case, if we try to do both, we still get the nap function and not the both function that we created here. And the reason for that is because of the ordering of these outputs and because these first two outputs are overriding that area in the middle. The way we can sort of fix this, order the formula so that we do get everything output is just by moving that. And now when you do both, it shows. And that was because I changed this order to start with the middle, right? In this case, because the output is in did both in the middle, we start with this section of the Venn diagram and then say, well, when this is filled, then show nap. And when this is filled, show gain. If you just pop one or the other, it just goes back to its other outcome that we've created. And now we still have the start now, which appears when both of them are empty. I want to show you all this because the ordering of the if statement is important. I don't know if this Venn diagram was helpful at all, but to start from the sections of the Venn diagram in which several constraints are true and to create outcomes based on where there's the most criterion to fill before layering those other criteria where it's just a singular checkbox being filled or not. In this case, because we're talking about two instances here, there's two constraints. We want to start with the both outcome. Go in order, think about all the possible outcomes, 
think about exclusivity and inclusivity and whether we want to use the and or the or function, right? And this Venn diagram is really helpful to use within subject of probability and statistics. And I just want to illustrate this last point here where it's a four-way Venn diagram, right? You're considering several different criterion. You have a lot more to think about. BD, AD, AC, and CB. When you're thinking about creating a ifs formula function that accounts for several different outcomes, it'll be very important to explicitly say, well, when criteria A and criteria C are true, then create an output for this section. If criteria B and criteria D are true, create an output for this, right? And once you've done that, you can start to think about, okay, well, if criteria A or criteria B is just filtered, then do those things. I think the more that you think about interacting properties via certain statuses and outputs, it's important to think about how you want to layer those possible outcomes and the order in which you want to propose those outcomes through the if statement. The moral of the story is start with the argument that has the most constraints and then sort of build down so that you build in that exclusivity and you build in that sort of output for all possible outcomes. As simple as this if formula might seem on the surface, it's just important to think about which parts of your output hold the most constraints and to start from there first before digging deeper and confusing yourself with why certain properties might not be showing certain outputs and statuses. All right, well, I, I don't think that was three minutes, but um, thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful.